AEW fans, welcome to Fabulous Wrestling Talk. I'm Jeremy York. He's my tag team partner, Clay Harden. We're here to talk about Forbidden Door, and I mean, they really should come up with a different name for it. We'll talk about that in a minute. But first off, how are you? I'm good. Recovering from a um, off day in the middle of the week. This is weird. I don't. I wish we could move Fourth of July to either like a Monday or a Friday every year. Like having it on Wednesday or Thursday just sucks. Yeah, I'd about to say the only thing that kept my routine is is I ran the Peachtree Road Race, so I was about equally as tired by the time I got home, and it 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 didn't mess with my sleep schedule. Yeah, I got up early and cooked ribs all day, so I, I just I don't know. I just all day yesterday I felt like it was Monday because I'm all Monday's my off day, and yeah. all day long today it felt like Tuesday. So I don't know. Yeah, yesterday felt like Sunday. I kept thinking it was Sunday. It was weird. It's weird having a holiday in the middle of the week. It is. And apparently but, I'm the only bu- I'm the only business in town that didn't close on, you know, the rest of the week. Yeah, I would say about a third of the people that I would interact with throughout a, a general day, we we didn't see it all today. So uh must be nice to get the Friday off. Yep, I agree, because everybody I called needing whatever, you know, that I normally deal with for had recordings closed till you know, an observance of the independence holiday till Monday, July, whatever. Eighth. That'd be the, uh, yeah, eighth, eighth, I guess. Yeah. I thought, well, that's dumb. <laughs> but enough about a holiday. Let's talk about what should be a holiday. And that's any day that a wrestling show is on, which pretty much means that every day would be a holiday. But in this case, Forbidden Door, that we both agree they should call something different because there there is no door anymore. It's just kind of an open archway. You just walk in and out, go in whichever portal or world you want to go in, and, and it is what it is. The concept was cool three or four years ago, but it's not really a thing anymore. And I don't know. I just, I'm not a fan of, of having CMLL guys or New Japan guys come in and do a one-off with no, no background, no story buildup, no. nothing. Like they started to, they had the CMLL guys in about a month ago and they started to do a couple things. And then by the time they decided to use New Japan too, they just stopped doing anything. Yeah. If you really want to have a forbidden door, we should have had um, maybe Cody Rhodes versus um, uh, Swerve in the main event or Gunther versus John Moxley. Ooh. That would be that, the forbidden. Yeah. Or the Young Bucks versus the Usos, or you know, something like that. Yes, that that would have been awesome. But instead, we got the uh mishmash of of random just it, I really it's almost like the WCW concept where they used to do the lethal lottery and they draw random people out to be tag partners in matches, and that's for the most part what this card looks like. It's like your playlist if it's got some rock, some rap, some country, some 80s hair band, some jazz, you know, and they're just kind of mixed up. That's kind of what this pay-per-view was. Yeah, it, it basically was uh, uh, a jukebox put together by a drunk guy. Yeah, yeah. we'll go with that. <laughs> we got some great tunes, but they are so out of the play, out of the ordinary and so out of place that it's yeah, it's almost like he's got the but speaking of which, let's run through. I did tell you early on that there's one match on the pre-show that I thought should have been on the main show, but seems like every show we tend to say that. Um, first off, they had Kyle Fletcher Ren slap through Serpentico in three minutes. I felt like that match should have been a minute. Anything spectacular about that match? Um, to to be a fair and open and transparent. I did not get the TV on until exactly 8 o'clock. Okay. Well, I don't think you missed much. Kyle Fletcher ran slap through Serpentico. And uh, good for Serpentico. He makes a pre-show, and uh, Kyle Fletcher gets a win for once because he ain't won in a while. Yeah, and Fletcher, I think he's been misused anyway. He's a big old dude that can get it. Um, I, I would have a, a title around his waist, and he would be one of my main guys if I were running the show. Doesn't he have one? Uh, he's got one of the one of the um, uh, 
Ring, Ring of Honor, Honor something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which is, which is worthless. Yeah. Uh, this is the, the, the next match is the one that uh, even though it had a lot of – it had – Two legitimate teams and two filler teams that we knew weren't going to win, but I feel like this should have been on on the main show. You had the Kings of the Black Throne, which are basically Malachi Black and Brody King. It's what happens when Buddy's not in the House of Black. When Buddy's not around, it's just those two. Um, they took on Tomohiro Ishii and Kyle O'Reilly, also the team of Roderick Strong and Gabe Kidd, with all their random. It, the goofiest thing is that they, yeah, they had Gato down there. But they had Matt Taven and Mike Bennett, who are an established team. Why are they not in the match with the other ones coming down? And yeah, then that's another, you that's had Private that Party. Another two that gets very mis misused is Taven and, um, Absolutely. and Matt, Mike Bennett. Absolutely, they might be one. They might be the maybe third best team in in uh, all of AEW. Yeah, that, they should definitely be in the tag team title picture. Yeah, but and then you had Private Party in the end. I mean. We know it was either Kings of the Black Throne or Private Party, and Private Party are basically the Hardy Boys of of AEW. They're good for spots and for putting people over, but very rarely do they ever get the boost up. Kings I've of always Black compared Throne. them. I've always compared them to uh, what's the team in um, Street Profits. Yeah, yep. Yeah. It's the, 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 I've always said Private Party was the dollar store Street Profits. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're they're pretty comparable. The only difference is is they don't have the meat and potatoes guy. They've got uh they basically have two Jeff Hardys and, and no Matt Hardy to put right. in. But obviously the Kings of the Black Throne win this. Buddy will be back soon enough. Congratulations once again to he and him and Rhea getting married a couple weekends ago. Uh for all the marks out there, as I said on the last show. Uh they are a legit cu- couple. Forget whatever you see on actual TV. It's not real. Right. Yes. It's just it's just part of the, the act. It's just go with it. But uh, like I said, here it is, Kings of the Black Throne. Anytime those any of those three guys wrestle, they should be on the main card. And that's I didn't care who else they went against, but even with all the firepower of Kylo, Riley, and Ishii and and Roddy and, and even Gabe Kidd, who is very underrated for what he does in, in New Japan, they just buried this on, on the pre-show that, as you said, you didn't even turn it on to watch it. No, I didn't watch it. And uh, uh, when we go through the, the main card, I'll, I'll tell you a few matches that should have been buried on the pre-show. Because at least this next match was where it should be. Uh, basically, Willow's team beat Chris Statlander's team, and then this past Wednesday, she got another win over her, so... That at least helped that storyline, but I had no idea who Tam Nakano is, and I had no idea who Momo Watanabe is, and I still don't know. No, don't know, don't care. Unfortunately, bless their hearts, do not. It means nothing to me, because we'll never see them again. No, but the Willow, Chris, that one are, angle is, is getting pretty interesting. I do like that. Yeah, it's getting very good, I, and especially with the Owen tournament thrown into the middle of it that's there's a lot of ways they can go with that one uh mariah may uh actually gets the win the tournament win over soraya soraya however you want to say it um was that on the pre-show it should have been main card i I wish i'd have watched that one i did i like both of those yeah, they're both really good at, at, at being workers, and most of the time they're the background for everybody else. So it, it was nice that they got a little bit of a feature, but they're on a pre-show, and they were not even the main event pre-show it, of the pre-show the next match was, and, and it's a crying shame that the, the next six people I'm going to mention were not on the regular pay-per-view. Once again, I, I, I literally walked in the door and turned the TV on at 8 o'clock on the nose. Well, here's the uh, the main event of the pre-show. The Lucha Brothers with Mystico versus Los Ignorables de Japón, which was the members of Yoda Suji, uh, Teton, and Hiromu Takahashi, who I'm a giant fan of. Time out. I did see that match. <laughs> what I mean that I mean that's just organized chaos. That is six is people right. who absolutely will throw their body at anybody. That's exactly what it was, and it was a like if you're an old school, you know, WCW Lucha fan, 
Yeah. No, if you're just an old school WCW type fan, it was you probably don't like that kind of match. Yeah. If you're a Lucha fan or a New Japan fan, it was it was right up your alley. It was a whole lot of high spots. I mean, just that's that's what you want to see is six guys just put on a show, and that's basically what they did. Yeah, anything the Lucha Brothers are in, I, I, I'm all in on. Absolutely. Um, so you always they, well, we always say the the first match on a card is considered your second best match on paper. Why in the world? I understand why you lead off with MJF, but why in the world did they think MJF versus Het, versus Hechicero was going to be the second best match on the card? Yeah, and if so, so right now my memory's coming back to me. I turned the TV on. the The last match on the undercard, the kickoff show, was on. I did watch it, and then when that match started, I just left the TV on and I did my whatever I had to do to get, you know, ready before actually sitting down and and getting into the the crux of the pay per view. Right, because that match meant nothing, and we knew MJF was going to win it. There's nothing and as we said, Wednesday was the heel turn, so he's back being, you know, despicable MJF, the one we all know and love, and you know, and the beat goes on. Yeah, which when the when he turned heel Wednesday night, and I just remember Tony Schiavone saying, I knew it. I knew he was I knew he was a piece of trash. I knew it. Like, like man, come on, Tony, you help write this stuff. Yeah, yeah, you're probably the one that that, that put this together. I mean yeah, but he's back where he needs to be. He needs to be the hill. Yeah, and more than likely, he's either next or on deck to be in the next challenger, and we know that. Nah, uh, they're gonna put the belt back on him at some point, especially with no Adam Cole anywhere to be found. Yeah, I was hoping he'd be back before um, the London show where they could have a rematch, but I don't know if it's gonna happen or not. Because as we said, at this point, the elite have stolen their their gimmick. They've stolen their storyline. So we're not going to see the story we thought we'd see. Right. Which is unfortunate. Yep, because it would have been really good. But once again, shout out to Roddy Strong for just putting that entire group on his back. And he's carrying the entire thing. Yep, he's been great. Uh, I want to see more of him. And more of the tag team. Don't care about Wardlow anymore, and and when Adam Cole comes back, great. But until then, give me that trio. Yeah, what did they do with Wardlow? I don't. He might he might be surfing back here or something. He might be on that little island back there, for all I know. I don't. I don't know why. How you? I don't. I heard Vance McMahon one time say that that it was hard to have monsters in the wrestling business because they look so unbeatable and you can't have them win in every single night. It's the, it's the reason they, they didn't put the belt on Andre the Giant. Do you know that? Yeah. Yeah. I've heard that. Yeah. They never put the belt on him because who can beat him? Well, he won at one time. The WWF championship. I'm pretty sure. Didn't, didn't he win it? And then the million dollar man bought it off of him. Maybe that was something like that, but that, that's why Vince always said he never would put the belt on him. But same thing with Wardlow. He looks, he looks so un, unbeatable. How can he put a belt on him? Because there's nobody that can that can beat him. Yeah, he doesn't. It doesn't look believable. So I, I mean, I don't know where the, where he's at, or like he was better when he was quiet and was just the the strong arm for MJF. Yeah, absolutely. I, I did like that role. And what's to say he don't join back up with him? But I don't know. He's he's been telling every you know when he was on camera for the last six months, said his name written on his wristbands and and telling everybody I was gonna kill him. So how you gonna tame him back up now? I don't know. Weirder things have happened. Hey, wrestling but fans have have very short memories. They do. They have. They are goldfish a lot of times, and and I'm guilty of that sometimes as well. I get caught up in it a little bit, and I yeah. will happily admit that. But uh, that's just part of the allure, I think. Yeah, it is. It is. Same thing happens with a good theme park ride. It's like you totally forget about what happened 10 seconds ago because you're already looking at the next thing. 
Yep. But up next, and probably the most predictable thing, because one team was not on the level of the other one at all, uh, the elite of the Jacksons and Kazuchika Okada defeated the acclaimed with uh, guest uh, guest uh, scissor the a- the ace scissor or scissor ace or whatever he called himself Hiroshi Tanahashi scissor ace we knew good and well that team had no shot against the elite the elite pick up another big win anything special you like about this match not really um I, I thought Billy Gunn being in it would have been a better could have probably built it up better um if you would have had the the bucks like after the match beat Billy Gunn down like beat him down bad yeah. Then you got reason for the acclaim other than the titles. You got more of a reason for the acclaim to be, you know, want revenge. So I think they missed the opportunity there. Yeah, this should have been for the tag belts is what this should have been. And instead, of, they tried to use all these people. And it it basically, to me, with the acclaim losing, even though it was, it was Okada pinning Tanahashi, and all the way I think of it is the acclaim, their title shot is done. Uh, it's coming. I think it's the... Uh... It's the next show, uh, I think. Where are we at next? Next is Wembley. All right? in, all in in London, maybe. Next is Wembley. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the next show. So I think that's when they're, they're that's that's when it's happening. But I don't see them beating the elite. No, no, no. It makes no sense. Um, this to me was probably the best match as far as if you just wanted a true wrestling match. And that was Brian Danielson over uh, Shingo Takaji. Uh, Takaji is, is just now really hitting his heyday over in new Japan, but that guy has been him and Danielson faced off like 10 or 12 years ago. And they said, this was just like part two. It's like match one never ended. This was just the second part of that match. It was just back and forth. Yeah, it was a good technical match. And of course we knew Danielson was going to win it because of the whole Owen Hart tournament thing um but i i I can't figure out if if danielson's really hurt like his shoulder neck's really hurt or if it's just part of the storyline because after every match he wrestled again um yeah wednesday night and they as soon as the match was over they tended to to his neck again yeah i mean uh it's almost like uh bob orton and, and the cast on his arm yeah but now he's in the finals so um I mean, maybe he really is hurt. Uh, who knows? But uh, we all know his, of- his shoulder and neck have been hurt for I don't know the better part of a decade. So maybe it it really is just a every match thing. There were a lot of good spots on there, and and, and a lot of spots where he got you know landed on his head neck area, and he kept holding it like he was like he was hurting him. But you know he pulled out the win at the end, and the, the doctors immediately came in and checked on him. And then Wednesday night he's all taped up, but. Uh, yeah, we that was as far as a technical, just a wrestling match. That was the best match of the night. Yeah, by far, by far. Um, Timeless Tony Storm defeated Mina Shirakawa. Uh, Mariah May wasn't really pulled back and forth like they had had brought it up to be so much. And then in the end, they all kind of hug it out and I believe kiss it out, if I remember correctly. And I did. then. And then move on. You know, it's this was, I don't know, the only thing missing were uh, lingerie pillows, I guess. They, they missed an opportunity here. They should I, I would like to have seen a, just a bloody brawl beat down, you know, and, and Tony Storm, who we knew was going to keep the title, um, just beat her down and, and be done with it and ride her off, you know, out of the script for forever. But yeah. that's not what happened. It was a good match. Good clean finish, and uh, they hugged it out then, and it was kind of whatever. Yeah, it just it could have been so much more special, and instead it was just another win for Tony Storm. Yeah, I don't know where, where she's going. Like somebody's got to be, somebody's got to come back to, and maybe it's Mariah May. Maybe they're making an angle where Mariah May challenges for the title next. Maybe not next, but maybe in the short down the road. I don't know. They're both from England. No, Tony Storm's Australia, I think. Is well, she lived in so. England. She lived in England for a long time. Yeah, she like stayed and trained there or something. I think. Yeah. So, 
I don't know. This might be the place to do it. Could be. Could be an interesting angle. They've got, what, three weeks to do it. Um, up next was Zack Sabre Jr. versus Orange Cassidy. Uh, I, I agree with you that I, I wasn't sure why Orange got the loss. It didn't really help what he has going. But as you said, Zack Sabre Jr. may be an AEW a lot more here recently. So it was kind of nice for him to notch a good win. Yeah, I thought for for going forward, Orange Cassidy probably should have got the win, but it was a it was a good you know entertaining match. Um, Zach Saber is more of a technical wrestler than than Orange yeah. Cassidy, and, and and I'm not taking anything away from from Cassidy. He he can work in the ring too, but he's more of a mm-hmm. you know he, he he plays more of the the get your ass whipped and then somehow come back and pull it out at the end type, and yeah. uh, and it looked like he was going to there at the end of the match, and then. Saber pulled out the win, but I don't know. But I, I was reading up a little bit on Zach Saber's contract. He's firmly with New Japan, and he's headed back as soon as that. As soon as the pay per view is over, he headed back to Japan. I guess maybe New Japan said we want at least one win, or we're not showing up, and they said we'll give you Zach. Yeah, maybe. Maybe I mean, well, they, they got they, the, they, they got they got the other one with the IWGP Championship. Yeah, that's true. They okay. We'll get to that one in a minute because uh, that was all planned of, anyway. Yeah, we predicted that one a mile away. So, yeah. Um, up next in uh, another big waste of let's see how long that match was fourteen exactly fourteen minutes a big waste of fourteen minutes of all of our lives. Samoa Joe Hook and Shibata beat the learning tree of Jericho, Big Bill, and Jeff Cobb because Brian Keith got roughed up in all the rough housing they do after matches. But Jeff Cobb was a good replacement. Uh, that guy is way better than he gets credit for. And uh, I thought I thought he at least held his own for the group. And then Brian Keith wasn't really hurt because Wednesday night he takes the sling off and, and yep. does his thing. But um, that match was kind of cheesy. Um, at the end, uh, they all hook Shibata and Joe all lock in a sleeper hole yep. at the same time, and it, it was just it was kind of cheesy. I don't know that. I, that t- I can't wrap my brain around that team of Joe Hook and Shibata. Like I don't just I don't, like we got I mean, these three guys. I understand. Guys I understand Joe is mentoring Hook a little bit, but beyond that, it just makes no sense. We got these three guys. We don't know what to do with them. Let's just stick them together. Now Shibata's funny yeah. with his with his translator. Yeah, that is pretty funny. But I, I don't know. Putting them put them together just I don't know. It didn't feel organic. It didn't feel like. It made much sense. I don't. I just. I don't know. Yeah, and and we're all in agreement that I just I don't know what to do with Hook. He seems like a good guy, probably a good guy to hang out with outside the ring. Uh, just, I I think he's almost at his ceiling now. There's not a whole lot you can do with him. He's 140 pounds. Yeah. Like, what are you gonna do with that guy? Last time I was 140 pounds was probably fourth grade. He's 140 pounds with like a. Like a twenty-eight inch waist. Yeah, I mean, when, that's probably fourth grade for me. Yeah, and I'm not that big of a guy nowadays, but and if he's I'm a lot up, more than that. If he's beating up two hundred sixty pound wrestlers, that is not believable. Nope. So it's whatever. But especially if you're going to have cheesy moments, I mean, you had the right person in the ring, you just had the wrong team winning. Because, hi guys, that's yeah. that's the best part of that match. Is this Chris Jericho like like on whatever kind of substance? I mean, he's not technically, but you know, just that whole act he's doing is just a whole new way to see Jericho. It is. It's funny, and I don't know, maybe Jericho called the he wanted to put them over, like like any of them need putting over. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't, maybe he's trying to help Hook out. I don't know. He seems to have a fatuation with Taz. Yeah, I had him kicked out of the building Wednesday night. That was pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, because Taz looked royally mad. Like somebody didn't tell him, and then security literally leaned in and went, "No, for real, you got to leave." Yeah, because he yeah, just kind of looked like, oh, "Okay, oh, okay, whatever." And then they lean in. You see him lean in, and as they lean in, he looks at him, and his whole demeanor changes. And he even looks over at uh, Excalibur beside him. Excalibur's like, "I think you got kicked out." I'm sorry, Taz. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty funny. Except for whoever had to babysit Taz the rest of the show. Uh, I'm sure he went back to catering and just hung out. Ate a pizza or something, you know. 
but had the ladder match next for the TNT Championship. Uh, we my both favorite, had it between my... Jack Perry and Takeshita, and and uh, Jack Perry takes this. Brisco, Mark Briscoe, Dante Martin, Leo Rush, and El Fantasmo, as good as they all are, were background noise to this match. Well, they had those four in there for the crazy shit that they don't that they don't mind doing off the top of a ladder. Mm-hmm. That's why yep. those four guys were in there. Oh yeah. Uh, but that was my favorite match of the night. Like, as far as being entertained and enjoying the match, that was my favorite match of the night. We'll get to mine. We haven't gotten to mine yet. But, uh, you know, Jack I, Perry knew, gets it. I knew Jack Perry was going to win that match. It's uh, – I explained to uh, Daniel on the WWE show we recorded right before this one. Uh, for anybody who's watching this one, go watch that one as well, where we talked about uh, Money in the Bank coming up. Uh, I said I told him I told him about how you have a faction who is getting all the titles and how it's the elite over in AEW. And I said, don't be surprised. I said, Judgment Day started to do it in WWE. Don't be surprised if the Bloodline ends up doing it here soon. I was like, but they're, I said between them and the elite, they're they're doing similar story arcs right now. So if you watch one, you're watching the other. And Jack Perry winning this is just one more belt for them. Yeah, but you know if you watch Jack Perry. He's a smaller guy, but he's not like he's on the higher end of the small. Like he's probably yeah. pushing two hundred pounds. Yeah, but uh, he he's really really good in the ring. And this whole you know ever since he turned heel has been the scapegoat. Perfect. Yep. Been per and it's, I'm glad he won the title. The scapegoat for Jack Perry is the loose cannon for Brian Pillman. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a thing that it puts him on a whole nother level to where you're like, you know what? This guy's very legitimate. But Mark Briscoe did a uh, swanton off the ladder from in the ring all the way to the floor. That dude's a wild man. Oh, he is. We've all heard stories about, about uh, how him and his brother on the road were crazy already, but the things they do in a ring are just ridiculous. Yeah, he's he's a wild man, and I'm 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 glad to see him getting finally getting a good TV time. Yeah, I mean he's a Ring of Honor champ, which doesn't mean anything to watch it to people who watch AEW, but he's getting regular weekly play on AEW, and it's great. Right. Yeah. We need we need we need more uh, Briscoes. Next match, I hope they paid Stephanie Vacker very well to uh, lay down for Mercedes Monet because I don't think there's a number that that I can come up with that I would accept as a payment to do it. Um, I saw the intros, and I think I took the dogs outside. Did some laundry, made a sandwich. And then I came back in enough time to see my girl, Britt Baker, come back out and ruin the, the celebration. Which went right back out to Wednesday where Monet did the same thing to Britt. And Britt basically told her, I'm not somebody to put up with your crap. And by the way, I'm actually the face of AEW, not you. Yeah, and it was it was awesome. She had the fans. She was talking about the um, the chants being pumped into her interest music and, yep. and had the fans booing her. It was it was awesome. Glad to see. I've called that out since the start. It's it's the same thing they do with Dominic Mysterio and WWE. There's no way that a twelve thousand seat arena can boo as loud as as Dom gets when he comes to the ring. So the you, Mercedes you they, CEO chant, same way. You think they pump that in? Oh yeah. Watch, I, I know every, uh, every time he starts talking, booed and it'll be so loud, and the hundred people behind him in the audience are basically picking their nose. <laughs> I know every time he starts talking, it gets loud and, and you can't even hear him. Yeah, it's almost on cue where it's like he starts to talk and there it is. And he starts to talk and there it is. There's no way the audience is not that good. <laughs> I don't know, man. The rest of the fans are pretty creative. We also live near a town that's football team pumped in crowd noise very regularly for a while till they got caught. So anything's possible. I can tell you this. From being in a, uh, a, a an arena live show in around not uh, two thousand one, that uh, Stone Cold doing a cutting a promo, there were sixteen thousand people saying what at the same time. So it it can be done. 
It can be, and I want to give the audience credit, but I know there's there's some underhandedness there. There's some production value. Anyway, if you know me, you know I cannot stand Stasha Mercedes Banks Monet or whatever her freaking name is. I think she's Rainbow. very overrated as a wrestler, and she's not a nice person. No, and you can tell. Yeah. You can tell when she interacts with people in the ring that they already are looking like this snotty little girl. And I'm not going to say she's a bitch because my mom might be watching this. and I wouldn't want my mama to get offended or upset yeah. with me. We're, we're definitely not going to say that. Not going to say Sasha Banks is a bitch, but she acts like the B word. Yep, very much so. The witch with a B. Uh, about five and a half minutes left. Uh, Naito over Moxley. This was the knockdown drag out. We knew it was going to be. We knew Naito was going to take the belt back over the pond with him, but this was still a classic. These two, they put on, I mean, you could say four or five star matches every time they wrestle. It it was, and, and it made sense for Moxley to drop it. He won it because they were doing an American tour over here. Um, he won the title. He went in, to all the American uh, dates that they had on this tour. Now that that tour is over, and the belt's got to go back to Japan. So he drops it back. It leaves for Japan, and we got a good 15-minute match out of it. Oh, yeah. Actually, 17.05 official time on that one. I was just taking a guess. <laughs> well, the only reason I say that is it was 15 seconds longer than uh, Monet versus Vacker. Yeah, which I didn't watch any of, but I did which watch is, which all is... of this one. All of that one. And uh, then lastly, the main event. Uh, Swerve Strickland ended up defends his belt against Will Ospreay. You know, you had a good theory, and your theory did hold true. The only difference was is we did the show before Collision, where on Collision, Swerve got laid out by Will Ospreay, and I literally went, I hope Clay sees this. He's going to see that the whole thing is going to flip. Yep, I was right. I just didn't have the right finish. You, you didn't know they had one more go-home show. Right. Um which is weird because usually when they're on, it's like SmackDown and Raw. Usually when they're on, on featured prominently on Dynamite, they don't get any airtime on Collision. So right. I had I had no reason to expect they would be a Collision. Well, they and all they did was come out. It was an interview segment. I think it started with Osprey. It was just the two of them were going to get face to face. That's what it was. And Prince Nana was the moderator of it, and. I mean, it was a great segment. Just as soon as that happened, I was like, that that almost feels like they changed their mind and had to have a segment to make it make sense. I would have changed my prediction had, uh, had I known that when we recorded. But it was a it was a phenomenal match. Anything with Will Ospreay in it. Will Ospreay could make me look good in the ring. Um, not to say that Swerve can't go because he can absolutely get it. Um, they was There was one spot where... Um, <clears throat> A swerve slammed him on the on the apron, and he was got up on the top rope. Was going to do the swerve stomp on the apron. Osprey rolls out and hits his hits his feet on the on the ground, and then rolls back into the announce table. And swerve flips around and does the swerve stomp on the announce table, which is wild. That's a great spot. And then that um, is something out of Lucha Underground. And then uh, WWE Hall of Famer Robert Gibson, who crashed my 4th of July cookout yesterday, um, sat on the couch, and he's like, let's watch some wrestling. I had ribs smoking. <clears throat> so I pulled up the Swerve Osprey match, and he kept talking about, like, every time they would hit a finisher, what was called a finisher back in his day, he said, that should be it. And then it was, you know, the match, like they would hit another, like it was finisher after finisher after finisher after finisher. Yep, yep. <laughs> and I understand why he gets agitated, you know, when he was wrestling full-time, like he still wrestles, but like when he was on top of the world, um, you get you hit your finisher back and then it was over. Yeah. And now it's just finish after finish after finish after finish after finish. And I could see why. He gets agitated, but times have changed, and it was yeah. just a – it was a – well, we got to the thing where Don Callis tried to give Osprey a screwdriver, and he threw it back at Don and didn't want to use it. Um, And then um, he was going to go for the Tiger Driver 96 or whatever they call it, Thunder Driver. 97? 
Not a, yeah. Whatever. Anyway, and then he changed his mind and didn't hit it. Um, it was it was just a lot of finishes and and at the end, Swerve finally get the he did hit the stomp and like twice I think. Anyway, after the match, that was a good moment where they hugged it out and and no hard feelings. And then of course, I thought it was weird Wednesday when uh, Oscar. Brady told Callis he wanted out of the Don Callis family. I never thought he was really in the Don Callis family. Callis keeps claiming him, but it's it's almost like an honorary thing. I know we got less than a minute, so I'll be quick with it. But I feel like he's either going to have like a hit taken out on him, basically, where like Fletcher's yeah. going to be the one to try to take him out, or Fletcher's going to jump on his side, and maybe Takesta takes him out or something. You're going to get Takesta Osprey, I think, is next. Yeah, yeah, because when Don Callis told him he was going to let him out of the agreement, and then he had this look on his face like, yep, I'm fixing to get him. So, I don't know, that, that ought to be interesting where it's going. Yep. But solid show, as always, not just this one, but the one we just talked about. But we've reached the end of the show. Thanks for ta- uh, thanks for uh, listening to Fabulous Wrestling Talk, AEW, Forbidden Door, for Clay Harden, my tag team partner. I'm Jeremy York. We'll see you guys next time. Deuces, gooses.